Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. So yeah, today's a big day. We will be installing a lift kit on my 2011 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. Really, really excited. Our road trip to the US up north is going to be really close. It's coming up very, very soon and really excited. Um, yeah, we plan to uh, drive up to Washington State, uh, maybe some other states in the, in the north and eventually make the way into into Canada. Um, so yeah, really excited for that. And so, so yeah, today, today I'm going to install a new lift kit. Hey, yeah, sorry. I just had to pick up the cat because it was, the cat was just meowing straight through the video. And yeah, so we're going to install a lift kit on the truck, which is going to be really, really exciting. Yeah. Also make sure, um, if you're interested in watching our trip up North, yeah, just click the bell icon below and subscribe and yeah, let's get to it. All right, yeah, this is my buddy Santana. How's it going? Uh, he's going to help me with the with the lift kit. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, we'll get Thanks for coming over. Cool. Yep, Let's all right. This is the first time that I'm actually doing anything suspension related on a vehicle. My friend Santana has a lot more experience with that, so he's going to be a really great asset. We are going to do the rear suspension first because this is where I will need the most help. And actually, my friend didn't have a lot of time that day had to leave a little earlier so we're starting with the left side basically jacking up the vehicle putting jack stands underneath and on the right side the same thing as well one thing you might notice is that the front left tire is lifting up while we're doing that but it will actually lower down once we lift up the other side one really important thing is that we forgot is to chalk the front wheels this is really really important for your safety and yeah we just forgot it uh, but we actually did it eventually later now that we had the truck sitting on the jack stands we also want to make sure that the truck doesn't tilt back this is because i actually have some load on on the back which is basically the the roof uh, sorry the bed rack and the tent and yeah just by standing on the rear we were making sure that it's not gonna lean back we will actually take away weight from the back so so that's going to be fine so next we're going to take the wheels off we can actually do this while when the truck is lifted because the truck is actually in park so the wheels are basically blocked if you're actually doing the front then you actually need to loosen the lug nuts when the truck is actually on the ground next i'm lowering the spare tire this is actually going to give us a lot of space to work. Now with the wheels and the spare tire off, we actually supported the differential with a hydraulic jack. This actually prevents the differential from dropping down or even just stretching the brake lines, which is like a really bad thing to happen. The night before, I actually soaked all the important nuts and bolts with WD-40. That actually helped get all the nuts and bolts loose. Well, that helped and obviously the California Sunshine Tax also helped. We are also supporting both sides with jack stands that actually just make sure that nothing is tipping to any side and everything is secure and nice. Now we're taking all the bolts of the suspension off. Basically the six bolts on each side for the leaf springs, the two bolts for the shocks and the four U-bolt nuts. Unfortunately, I lost some footage of reassembling the leaf springs, but basically all you do is just put the new leaf springs in, make sure that the error and the plus sign are in the front. Uh, it might be different for if you have a different leaf spring pack. Also, the bushings need to be greased, of course. I used moldy grease. That is basically a lithium grease with a molybdenum base. I hope I said this right. We basically just grease the face of the bushing as well as on, the, as on the inside and on all the contact areas that are going to pivot. Now with the leaf packs and the bushings, shackle and the shocks all installed, we ran into a little issue. So you can see that uh, this bolt that holds the leaf pack together is actually a little bit long. So I ended up drilling the hole in the bump stop a little bit deeper. I think the hardest part in the rear was really aligning the axle back on the leaf springs. 
So the leaf springs have a little notch underneath that needs to fit in the hole of the axle. And what I found that helped really well was actually working with a second jack that would compress the leaf spring and working with the other jack that supports the axle to increase or decrease the distance between the leaf springs and the axle. Next, we needed to take the lower mounting plate for the U-bolts and drill the holes a little bit bigger because the new longer U-bolts are actually a little bit thicker. Um, I think a little bit, even a little bit thicker than half inch, um, maybe like by like one thirty seconds or something. We also primed and painted the holes. Another issue is that the U-bolts don't perfectly fit into the holes. So I used the clamp here and to compress the U-bolt a little bit so that the pins would actually go through the holes. So I tightened the U-bolts down to spec. I did not tighten down the other parts of the suspension because of the bushings. We need to actually preload the suspension first and then tighten down the bolts. Also, I got some nice rally mud flaps. Uh, the reason is that here in California, well, California is one of 11 states that requires mud flaps. And in our area, unfortunately, mud flaps, um, yeah, the mud flap laws are actually enforced. So I got these. Yeah, these are rock blocks, mud flaps, and I think they're pretty nice. Now I'm ready to put the wheels back on, lower the vehicle, and torque everything down to spec. You can find the specs in the repair manual, which you can find very easily in Google. Uh, next up, I'm going to jack up the truck in the front and work on the front suspension. Before I actually jack up the truck, I'm going to loosen the lug nuts first. This way the wheels don't spin when I try to loosen the lug nuts. After taking both wheels off, I'm disconnecting the sway bar on both sides. This has to be done so that we can actually get the sway bar out of the way to get to the lower mount of the front shock. Now I'm loosening the three nuts that hold the coil over in place. I just loosen them, I don't take them off quite yet. Then I loosened the lower bolt and then unscrewed the top bolt. After that, you should be able to get the coil over out. Let's compare the old coil over with the new one. So the new one is a coil over assembly from Aldox Offroad. And you can actually see that it's not longer than the old one. Instead, we're actually getting our lift out of the spring, which is a much stronger spring. Um, and we'll be able to get two inches of lift out of that. The benefit is that we will not have any coil bucket contact and therefore do not need any new upper control arms. Now I'm ready to install the new shock assembly. Just make sure that if your top hat has a marker, make sure that points to the inside of the truck towards the engine. And yeah, one issue that I had is that the shock was actually a little bit twisted, was a little bit off. So it was actually good that I had it already mounted on the top. So I just grabbed an extension, a socket extension and just twisted the shock back into place. Next, I'm tightening down the top bolts to spec, but I actually don't bolt down the lower shock mount quite yet because again, I need to preload that bushing. And because we need to preload the bushings, I just hand tighten the lower bolt and uh, now I'm actually installing the new camber bolts, which is pretty simple too. Just undo the bolts. The bolt might be a little bit hard to come off, but um, what I'm actually doing is I'm using a socket extension to push the bolt through. And then you can just push the new bolts in and make sure you have two wa one, one washer on each side. And it doesn't actually matter which direction the bolt points. So now we're finally able to torque down all the remaining bolts, basically the lower shock assembly mount, as well as the camera bolts. And to do so, we actually need to preload the suspension. So what I'm doing is just using the jack underneath the lower control arm, pump it up and make sure that the vehicle actually lifts up a little bit. So it actually lifts a tiny bit off the jack stand, but just a little bit. So to make sure that the whole weight is on the jack. Now that everything is torqued down to spec, 
it has already turned night and the last thing I'm going to do for today is to reconnect the sway bar. In the next video I'm going to show how to fit the 33 inch tires. So yeah, stay tuned.